Right, and we're back playing the Empire. So, we left off. We were about to enter. We were building some buildings. We were building some units. And we're about to enter. Let's do this. Bam. So, a whole bunch of Empires take their turn. Oh, here we go. The secessionists send out a force to stall your advance. Take the fight to them and demonstrate the manner in which you will regain mastery of these lands. Demonstrate the manner in which we will regain mastery of these lands. Right, so we're going to take our army and go and fight the enemy army. It's going to be amazing. Mission issued. Engage the enemy. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Objectives. Defeat the enemy. Belong. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Empire successionists. Okay, treasure reward. Give us some money. Awesome, okay. Mission Come on, click. Issued from time to time by those so homeboy check. These can be reviewed at your request, my lord. All right, you can stop talking for a second. Winds of magic change. The fickle winds of magic. Chaos Realm across the world, wind wax, wane, blah de blah de blah, blah blah blah. The stronger winds are blowing in the region. The stronger the winds are blowing in the region, the faster they will replenish in battles. The stronger the winds are blowing in a region, the faster they will pre re will replenish in battles fought there, and vice versa. This affects how many sp aha. This affects how many spells can be cast over the course of the battle. So remember when we talked about the Winds of Magic and how in Warhammer Tabletop the simulation is that there's a dice roll and an amount of Winds of Magic tokens are generated in every magic phase. So this is what they're trying to simulate here. In short, the more of these Winds of Magic events that happen, the more spells you can cast. Nice. This is a very nice faction in faction tie to Warhammer. I like this. I like how they do this. In fact, I like this game so far. They've done some things quite well. Pause that for a second. One of the things I was actually thinking about doing is we don't really know how big this world is. I sort of remember Warhammer, the Warhammer map, but not accurately. Let's check it out. I have an intuition that pressing M will do something. Let's do it. M. M does nothing. Okay. What is the map button? Uh, it appears to be a strategic overview. Tab. That worked. A mouse wheel lisp. Right. So this is how this nonsense looks like. Okay, Reichland, Stirland, Averland, River, Reich, Middleland, Wasteland, Nordland, Sea of Claws, Mountains, Sea of Chaos. Okay, for for from memory from memory you have I think orcs here orcs in this sort of area dwarves here undead here hmm yeah undead here orcs here dwarves here what is over here? I cannot remember. Is it Skaven? Or is it Bretonia? I'm a hard time remembering. What is this? Gizmo? So when I scroll, it zooms in. Okay, let's not let. Okay, so the map works. We we found it. We know how it works. Let's go in and let's keep breaking people. So, what? We need to fight this army over here. It has one unit of swordsmen that we know about for sure, and then have some other units. What are these bars? Is this... Mm. My guess is that this is the number... This whole bar is the total number of units that you can have in this army stack. When we have armies that have... When we have fights that have more units than a stacks, then they will come in as reinforcements to the battle. And I guess we'll just deal with that later. Oh, hello. Skill... Skill point breakdown. Character skills, battle skills, campaign skills. Current experience required for the next rank. 900, okay. There's a progression system in this. So. Stance. Right, okay. So this implementation of stance is so... Uh, I can't actually remember which game this happened in specifically. But in uh, the previous one, which would be Attila... These stances gave this unit stack, this army, special bonuses. Let's find out what these do. March. Increases campaign movement by 50%. Disables recruitment. 
and Vigor is tied and battle initiation is disabled. Vigor is tied means that the units are tied when they join, enter the battle. Initiation, mm, I'm not quite sure what that means, probably you don't get to deploy. You just enter battle and you don't get a chance to redeploy your men in the deployment field. Recruitment is disabled, okay, you can't get new men, and, but you can move past them. Ambush stance conceals the army, allowing surprise attacks against passing enemies. So, a attack happens, if you see we have this our army, this red zone is the threat zone of our army. Which means that, well, which means that, from previous games, how it worked was that if an enemy army walked into the threat zone, it could not traverse the threat zone, but instead had to attack our stack if it wanted to move through the threat zone. But it could leave the threat zone in the direction that it came from. I think that's right. Or maybe it couldn't leave once you got there. Anyway, details. So, strategically, you use this threat zone to restrict movement. Like we can see here, from this section to this section, we could maybe create an acceptable bottleneck for enemies to march through. And then ambush them. If we roll high enough on the ambush, which in this location would be 45%. Now another interesting feature is that these roads have an actual use. These roads multiply, or technically I guess, they would reduce the action point cost of an army to move on them. So, summon the elect accounts. Summon the elect accounts. So, as we see this road all the way from Altdorf, Altdorf, yes, exactly, Altdorf, this road goes all the way to Grunberg, and then goes on this way, and that way, and this way, and that way. There is, therefore, some strategic element of gameplay that we need to do, or at least that we need to be aware of on this map, to win. What kind of terrain is this? Trespassing has deployed. Yeah, okay. Oh, chaos corruption. This is why this, if you can see here, this section is a different color to this ground. Hmm, interesting. So, I command here. what was our actual objective? No, oh, sp spell browser. What is this? Wait, well, hold, hold, hold on. One shiny thing at a time. Let's deal with one shiny thing at a time. So, the shiny thing that we were dealing with was the stances. We'll come back to this, and we'll come back to this. Now, this shiny thing. March makes us move fast. Ambush, minimum required to assume is 25% total campaign, campaign movement range. Okay, so there's a cost. Hidden until discovered or battle initiated. Chance of spotting nearby foreign armies 50%. Disables campaign movement. Uh huh. So you use this to enter ambush stance to trigger an ambush event against passing enemy. En uh, pa uh, wow, language. So we use this to trigger an ambush event against passing armies. And then when we fight them, bad things will hopefully happen to them. Uh, raiding stance, minimum requirement 25. Income generated from raiding 0. I guess this income generated from raiding 0 is a dynamic tooltip because we should really not raid our own territory because... We could, but yeah. Mechanics. Uh, campaign movement range minus 25%. That's not 25, that's 25. Public order. Right, the reason that is green is because it's good for us and bad for the, ba for the people that we're doing it to. So we would reduce the public order of the territory that we are in by raiding it by 3. Like we spoke about public order is an important resource to manage in cities. Sorry, not in cities, in provinces. Or is it actually cities? 225. It is in cities, I'm incorrect. Now, back to stances. Raiding, immune to attrition, vigor and battle winded, public order. Oh! Mmm. We will, we will public order minus 30 when raiding an own province. I guess... Yeah, I guess this dynamic tooltip is dynamic enough to know where my army is. That's on friendly territory and if I raid my own territory it will give me minus 30. <laughs> okay. Uh, in camp. Minimum movement range 50%. Establishes replenishment and access... Aha, uh -huh, right, so here global access to the recruitment pool. We'll figure out what that means later. My, my expectation is that we can recruit units from any of our holdings. What I don't know is 
whether or not those units will be teleported instantly from the, lo from the location where they can be built to my army or they will have to walk. We'll see. Immunity to attrition. Uh, that's nice. Leadership and defense. And what is the last one? Channeling. So this is, I guess, unique to Warhammer Total War because this one channeling one wasn't. So the ones that were in the pre in Attila was uh, March, forced march, ambush, raiding, encampment. I can't remember if there's another one. I don't think there was. This is the new one. Channeling increases the favor the favorability of the winds of magic when fighting battles. Minimum requirement 50%. So we pay 50% of our travel of our action points in that army stack. We reduce our movement speed, but our Winds of Magic Power receives a 15 unit bonus. Let's leave that at that for now. Let's just not remember that we have stances, that we have things that we can have this do. Um, so, Karl Franz is level 1. He's a duelist? What does that mean? This unit is best used to attack individual targets, such as lords or heroes. As it can only damage a few individuals at a time, it is not suitable against hordes of weak enemies. Right. So to kill Franz, you have to put a thousand goblins on top of him. However, if you, pu if you put him up against the Demon Prince, Karl Franz will probably kick the living snot out of the Demon Prince. Upkeep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Karl Franz hits like a 290 ton truck. Psychology, forest hiding, courage, resistance, missile resistance 15%. Yeah, okay, nice. Um, mm, this gizmo can go I away. Am Prince and Emperor. Prince and Emperor, welcome. Ah, I did not expect that button to open this menu. Let's go back a second. So this is basically, this character details, view the character equipment, mount, and skills. Rank. I also did not expect that button to open a completely separate menu. Let's go back a second. So, this opens the character sheet. Right click doesn't work on him, so we have to click the button, okay? Right, it's the same sort of menu. We can flip the, between the details and the skills between the skills and the details tab. Oh, okay. Mm, this can be a right. So let, 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 let's figure out what's going on. Let's let's get stuck into. In fact, no. Let's not get stuck into this. Let's fight this army. Yes. We know that Karl Franz, Franz, Franz. Exactly. Karl Franz can level up, and he can gain some cool shit. He's the Emperor. He can get some more cool shit. Because he's a badass Emperor. We'll deal with him later. We know that there is a spell browser. That means there is magic. Let's do let's do this quickly. Let's Law of Metal. Right. The other hero that we could have potentially played is a Law of Metal, so it was a type of magic school. Law of Death, War, Heavens, Vamp Vampires. So, we're going to fight some battles. We're not going to get too stuck on magic, even though I really, really want to, but we'll really fight that army. Oh shit, that was fucking cool. Foot off. Mm. Okay, no, we're going to fight this army. Right, Karl Franz is going to go and beat up this guy. One, two, three, click. Men, we must attack. Battle is upon us. Study your options carefully. The enemy are close. Blood will be spilt. Okay, this is the pre-battle screen, pre-battle orders, pre-battle options. When engaged, but a bur, but a bur, or withdraw, but a bur, but a bur, but a bur, but a bur. Okay, engagement options or attack or withdraw appear immediately after battle. Okay, expand tool to get Okay, yeah. Balance the power. Okay. Yeah, fine. Whatever. Karl Franz against Helmut. Lutenhoff. Helmut has one, two, three, four, five units. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units. Including ourselves. No, not 
10 units, right? <laughs> Whatever, mathematics. Let's not get stuck up on it. <laughs> then, the important thing, we can fight a battle manually. Power balance. Uh, in the previous games, this estimation wasn't always accurate. I don't particularly like relying on this. It is a good ballpark guess, but it is not accurate. How pages we need to worry about. So, as options, we can fight this battle. Scout terrain. Hey, it loaded up the preview. Awesome. Okay. So here is the bat. Is the map that we will fight on. Our section is this color, I assume, because we're this color and red is always bad. So I assume, yeah, exactly. Awesome. That's their side. So this is the hill. We will have the hill to start on. Therefore, we have height advantage. Because they are defending, the AI will probably set up on this hill and camp. Probably. It depends how the difficulty slider affects AI decision making, but we'll see. So, that does that. This does a quick save. We want quick save. We can retreat, we can fight, or we can automatically resolve. Automatic resolve... I can't remember the algorithms that are used for automatically resolving battles but we will not get stuck on it and instead we'll be good champions of Sigma and we'll fight this battle to reunite the Empire. So friends, we will see you in the next video and expect us to be fighting for the glory of Sigma then.